How long does it take to learn Japanese? If you Google, you might come across this number, 2200 hours. This is the number the Foreign Service Institute of the United States came up with. And according to them, with 2200 hours, you can achieve general professional proficiency in speaking and reading. And how do they define that level of proficiency? They say, able to speak the language with sufficient structural accuracy and vocabulary to participate effectively in most conversations in practical, social, and professional topics. So it's kind of like you can express yourself in Japanese without being too frustrated, even though your Japanese isn't really that perfect. And when it comes to reading, they say, able to read within the normal range of speed and with almost complete comprehension, a variety of authentic prose material on unfamiliar subjects. So it's like you can read books in Japanese for fun. So this is a pretty good level if you want to come to Japan, make friends and possibly work in Japan. Although if you want to make one of those foreigners start speaking Japanese and Japanese people are shocked kinds of videos, it might not be enough. But it's a decent level practically speaking. And this is assuming that you only speak English because if you speak a language that's much closer to Japanese, for example, if you speak Korean, it's gonna take much less time. And in comparison, they said it will take 600 hours to learn Spanish and 1,100 hours to learn Thai. That's interesting because Thai is easier to learn than Japanese for English speakers. It's probably gonna take a lot of time to learn how to read Japanese because of kanji. But intuitively, I think it's not hard to think that if you spend 2,200 hours learning Japanese, you will get somewhere. And to make this number easier to understand, if you spend an hour a day, it will take 6 years. And if you spend 2 hours, it will take 3 years. And if you spend 3 hours a day, it will take 2 years. Now, do you think this is a lot? Now, when I started learning English seriously, I came across a similar number. Because English is a very difficult language for Japanese people. For the same reason that English is so different from Japanese. And I heard that I needed to spend two or three thousand hours to be at a decent level. And I thought it was a lot. But it turned out it wasn't actually bad at all. Because of something that many beginners don't quite understand. And that is, learning a language isn't about sitting at your desk, reading textbooks, and doing boring exercises. Most learning happens when you watch your favorite TV shows, read books, or listen to your podcast. And of course, watch family-friendly anime. And when I started doing that, my English got much, much better in a pretty short amount of time. And I realized that spending four years learning English in school was pretty much nothing compared to that. But when I talk about using authentic materials like TV shows, YouTube videos, or anime, there's always people who don't really believe that. Because this idea of using textbooks or going to a language school is so deeply ingrained in people's mind. Because many people say, Oh, authentic materials are too hard for me. I really need to learn grammar or vocabulary before using authentic materials. Or sometimes, Oh, I can't learn proper language if I use authentic materials. Or some people like using the word immersion and say, Oh, I need to study textbooks first before moving on to the immersion stage. But getting a lot of input from different resources isn't really a method. It's a necessity when it comes to learning a language. That's when you learn the language most. And there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to using authentic materials. And the most common one is you need to understand nearly everything if you want to use authentic materials. That's why people feel it's too difficult to use them. But that's not the case. It's okay if you don't understand everything because you don't understand everything. You only understand what you understand. Let me give you an example using my favorite anime for beginners, Teasing Master Takagi-san. Nishikata. Tanoshikatta yo. So she said, Tanoshikatta yo. And Tanoshikatta is a past form of the adjective tanoshi, So it means it was fun. And yo is a type of word that we use to add nuances to sentences. And we often use yo when we share something that the other person might not know or disagree. So tanoshikatta yo means it was fun. Now, is this too difficult to understand? I would say probably not. There's actually a lot of easy sentences in authentic materials 
and with some explanations, you can understand a lot of them. And here's another misconception. When I talk about using authentic materials, some people immediately think that they're not supposed to look up words in a dictionary or read grammatical explanations. They think that I'm talking about not learning grammatical rules. That's not what I'm saying. It's actually the opposite. Learning basic grammatical rules helps a lot when it comes to learning a language. What I'm saying is, you don't need to learn those grammatical rules in isolation devoid of context. You can perfectly learn grammatical rules using authentic materials, just like you did just now. Remember, tanoshi means fun. And if you change this to tanoshikatta, it's a past form. So if you say tanoshikatta, it means it was fun. This is a piece of grammar. So you don't need to learn a lot of grammatical rules in isolation first before using authentic materials. But of course, if you are an absolute complete beginner, there are a few things that you can learn to help you understand Japanese. You should definitely learn hiragana and katakana and some basic grammar. But how much grammar you need to learn before using authentic materials? It's actually not that much. You don't have to spend months or sometimes years studying textbooks or going to a language school. There's only a few grammatical rules that you can learn fairly quickly. For example, if you understand basic particles and inflections, you can understand a lot of Japanese. For example, Japanese words often inflect or change their forms to express different ideas. Tanoshi is the present form, and tanoshikatta is the past form. And do you remember that she said tanoshikatta yo? Yo is a particle that we often use when we tell somebody something that they might not know. And here are some of the basic particles. Another example. Now, you might think this sentence is kind of long, but remember, you don't have to understand everything. You can just focus on something that you can potentially understand. So let's focus on mezurashikunai, isn't it rare? Mezurashikunai is the negative form of the adjective mezurashi, rare. So she said, isn't it kind of strange? Is it really a coincidence? That's what she meant. So you just learned another inflection. Nai is a negative form. And identifying inflections is actually pretty easy. Of course, it's gonna take some time before you can inflect words smoothly when you're talking to Japanese people in real time. But identifying and understanding them is relatively easy. Let's try another one. She said, Ja ikuyo, ja, then. Iku means to go. And she's using yo because she's kind of announcing that she's going. So she's telling him that she's going to start playing the game. And I hope you can see how easy it can be to use authentic materials. So if you wanna learn Japanese with me, I will teach you the kind of Japanese the real life Japanese people actually speak. So click the link in the description and subscribe to my email group. And if you do this every day, it's not gonna take 2,200 hours before you start enjoying authentic materials. It's gonna take much, much less time before you can start enjoying watching anime for fun and learn Japanese at the same time. Remember, understanding complex sentences is much easier than producing the same sentence on your own. In other words, it's much easier to understand anime than speaking Japanese fluently. And if you get to the point where you can understand Japanese anime, TV shows, YouTube videos, or books casually, it won't be hard to do that for thousands of hours. Just think, how many hours do you spend a day using English? Maybe you check the news in the morning, you talk to your friends, you go to school or work, and you talk to your classmates or colleagues in English, you check social media, or maybe you hang out with your friends if you are a normal human being without a lot of social anxiety, or maybe you like spending your time on Reddit posting negative comments in English. So you are already spending hours using English. If you allocate a portion of that to Japanese, you can easily spend a few hours a day using Japanese. So it's not gonna be that hard. Yet, there's many people who think that they need to come to Japan and go to a language school to learn Japanese. And those people spend months learning Japanese in a language school. And despite that, they don't really understand real life Japanese. They can understand their Japanese teachers and their classmates, 
but not real life Japanese people. And it's because the kind of Japanese they learn is kind of a modified version of Japanese for foreigners. And textbooks, apps, and schools don't really teach you very common words and expressions that we use every day. And instead, they teach you less frequently used words and expressions and make you practice them over and over again. Of course, you will learn some Japanese and it's not completely useless, but how are you supposed to understand real life Japanese if you don't learn words and expressions that we use in real life? And if you want to learn Japanese with me, I will teach you the kind of Japanese that real life Japanese people today actually speak using natural, realistic examples. So click the link and subscribe to my email group, Japanese with Utah.